Hazy, hot, humid with showers and storms developing on Friday. Some could be strong to isolated severe. Good Thursday night, East Tennessee. David Aldrich, Captain Accurate here from the Captain Accurate Weather Command Center. Well, we hit 92 today. I thought you said we'd hit 90. I did. I thought 90 would do it. We hit 92. I guess it was two extra degrees uh, to be shared by everyone in the valley. 88 the normal high, so we were four degrees above normal. And this does mark the 36th day of the year where McGee Tyson has hit the 9-0 mark. Interesting to note all the same. Now, not everybody got to 92. Look at Warper, 86. Oneida is 86. And our friends in Campbell County, in La Follette, Jacksboro, hit 90 themselves, while it was 88 in Morristown and 88 in Newport. But it depended on where you were, and with enough sunshine, we'll see that again, I think, tomorrow. We'll be headed toward the low 90s again on Friday, but that could be enough rocket fuel to cause some storms to fire up. The ultimate Doppler radar this evening as we approach 9 o'clock, nothing to see here. The ultimate Doppler radar presented by your local Marco's Pizza, not seeing much at all. In fact, we had a few isolated showers, looked like it was in parts of Greene County, County. I saw a couple that tried to move through uh, Hawkins County earlier this afternoon, but not much to see elsewhere. By the way, Marcos.com, the place to go if you're hungry for a late night snack. Maybe you haven't had dinner and you would like some delivery. Hardin Valley, Farragut, Maryville, a couple of locations they're located in. They're also can be found in Fountain City, Halls, Oak Ridge there in Anderson County, as well as Middlebrook Pike and Ebenezer Road. Now open under new ownership, new leadership, better than ever. Check out their large pepperoni pizza. It's magnificent. They call it the Magnifico and the pepperoni and sausage pizzoli is my absolute favorite for a lunch idea for tomorrow. Less than $6 for a limited time. Check out the new Pizzoli. We love Marco's here at Captain Accurate Weather. By the way, you can see it's quiet now. There are showers up to the north. This will be an evolving situation tomorrow. So you're not going to wake up to rain, but you will certainly have it for the drive home, I think, in spots. I left a 60% chance by day, 80% chance at night. So it will build to a crescendo, and then we'll do it again on Saturday. Comes in stages, comes in waves. We'll get maybe a 60% chance of rain during the day on Saturday. Might very well be quiet at midday, but then it comes back Saturday night. So that's the type of situation that will be occurring, I believe, here in East Tennessee. More wet weather this evening across the Great Lakes, stretching across Michigan and parts of Ohio, and more thunderstorms and heat concerns. It's not just orange, which represents the Houston heat advisory, but areas around Memphis and back towards southern Arkansas. They're under an excessive heat warning, which means it feels like temperature well over 105, could be closer to 110. Not a good situation there. Very, very hot, but after all, it is summer. Meanwhile, Ernesto uh, is going to be churning up the waters. You say, well, I shouldn't care about that because that's a storm in the middle of the ocean. But have you ever been on a paddleboard? And then like the big boat way over there and give it a couple of minutes, right? The wake, the wave, suddenly you're on the paddle and you're like, I'm falling off. And blah. That's the type of thing we have on the East Coast. The United States tonight can anticipate some swells from Ernesto because Ernesto is churning up the water. And even though this is not going to hit the U.S. mainland, it will close in on Bermuda. Last check, winds were at 90 miles an hour. So it's getting stronger. And you see that little island underneath the cone? I thought that was probably the best way to illustrate. That's Bermuda. Beautiful island. They got pink sand, pink coral in the sand. It's a beautiful place. I've been there a couple of times in my lifetime. I've been fortunate to have that be the case. But they're going to get pounded by what could be 105 to maybe 90 mile an hour winds. If this storm holds together, Ernesto is going to take a big, uh, they'll put a, a big, big hurt on Bermuda. Uh, but that will be something that uh, they have to brace for. They've got time to get ready. Uh, but it's going to be tough. And as we move into the weekend, into Sunday and Monday, eventually it's going to move well east of Halifax. So if we reorient our map here, I think it's a little easier. Right? Yeah, that's much better. Much better. Now I can see where the cone is. And I want to know where Knoxville is. That's on the bottom left. Knoxville's on the bottom left. It's nowhere near here. But if you're going to the beaches, if you're going to be at Myrtle Beach, Virginia Beach, they can anticipate life-threatening, that's the verbiage from the Hurricane Center, life-threatening uh, surf and rip currents. So uh, there might be some need for the lifeguards to tell you to get out of the water. That's a real, that's a killjoy if you spent money to go to the beach in September. Maybe you uh, empty nesters. You don't have kids in school. You're going to spend some time in August at the beach. Yeah, this is one of those uh, situations where Ernesto can play an indirect role on those who might be headed to the shore. By the way, as far as Ernesto is concerned, we can cross his name off the list. Francine is the next name on the list. It'll be followed up by Gordon. And then Helene, followed by Isaac. Those are some of the names that we have already predetermined 
uh, the National Hurricane Center has predetermined for 2024 as far as possible names. But I do want to talk about what's interesting from this perspective. The only area of interest right now is in the Pacific. But these things can change in a heartbeat. They can change over the next three or four days. They can certainly change in the coming weeks because the peak hurricane season usually occurs around September 10th. It's just one of those things. Headlines tonight, showers and storms develop Friday. It might be late morning for you if you're in Jamestown or perhaps Oneida, but it might be an afternoon thing if you're in Seymour, if you're in Wares Valley. Oh, it might take all afternoon just to get to you. As far as the rain coming in from the west, more rain and storms on Friday night. I have a 80% chance of rain then. And then we'll do it again, 60% chance of rain Saturday, 80% chance Saturday night. It's just one of those things that comes and goes. Storm Prediction Center also highlighting the dark green area for Knoxville. Oh, well, what does that mean? What is that? I have to squint. i got to get my reading glasses. That says isolate. Oh, isolate it, which means you might get it, and then most of us don't. But if we do get severe weather tomorrow and Saturday, because it's a twofer, it would be damaging wind. No tornadoes. Not expecting tornadoes, but damaging wind may be a byproduct of what develops in East Tennessee over the next couple of days. Because you can see they got very generous with the green crayon here, right? The severe weather risk shows a little patch of yellow in the heart of Kansas and maybe northern Oklahoma. Scattered severe storms in Wichita. But if you look at Tennessee, virtually everybody, maybe one, one acre of northeast Tennessee, not colored, colored there. We zoom in a little bit tighter. Yeah, most of us, most of us in Tennessee. 99% of Tennessee under the possibility for an isolated severe storm tomorrow, and we'll be watching that again. Saturday, does it look any better? Nope. Same pattern. It's basically slowing down, if not stalling. So we've got another go for uh, isolated severe weather on Saturday. Temperatures on Saturday should also be in the upper 80s to near 90. I have us in the low 90s tomorrow. We were in the low 90s today, so the, the longer it takes for the rain to get in here Friday, the better chance we have to get into, well into, the lower 90s. As far as the blown front, look what happens by the time we hit tomorrow morning. You get out the door at 6, you're out the door at 7. Maybe you're out the door precisely at 7.15, as illustrated here. Uh, it looks like the closest rain is around Nashville. You're going to get to work tomorrow morning with no problems. No problemo. But then, but the afternoon, it kind of like tries to get in there, 12, 12, 15. It looks like it wants to do something, but it's not really doing anything. Give it some time. Maybe for the drive home. Can we light it up? Oh, there it is. Oh, look at that. It's like it's raining all over the place. Got to turn on the wipers. Got cars in front of me slowing down, taking me extra long to get home on a Friday evening. That's for the birds. But again, be careful what you wish for. Because I've had a lot of folks comment on Facebook, I wish it would rain. I really wish it would rain. Well, guess what? It's going to rain as they develop tomorrow from northwest to southeast. And then we're going to keep, I think, heavy rain at times Friday night. Kind of indicates a little bit there. Then a bit of a pullback for maybe early Saturday, and then it's going to come racing back. So you're going to find pockets of heavy rain, not the whole time, but certainly enough where you will wish you had the umbrella close by. And even on Sunday when the front pulls away, there's what we call the old wraparound moisture right? The showers and storms come in behind the front and we've got unsettled weather on Sunday. I got a 60% chance there as well. So got a lot to cover uh, and the amount of rain could easily be in excess of an inch to two inches in spots. Again, it's going to be dependent on where those showers take up residence. Uh, tonight, 69 degrees, few clouds, patches of fog, but sticky, much stickier than it's been. 70 for a low in La Follette, 71 Teleco Plains, 67 in Sevierville, 67 Morristown for your low temperature tonight. As we look ahead to tomorrow, Friday, 91. We hit 92 today. We're in the keeping with the same pattern. But the winds are going to be picking up. And with that wind out of the southwest, it means more humidity. You mean the humidity? Yeah, the humidity. The humidity is going to be there. So it's going to be stuffy. Er, it's going to be hot. Er, and it's going to feel like it's in the mid to upper 90s, potentially. Mid to upper 90s for the heat index, or feels like for your day tomorrow. Hopefully that doesn't surprise you because uh, you're listening to me. I'm trying to give you some guidance. 90 in Oak Ridge, 91 for Kingston and our friends down in Athens, Teleco Plains, Madisonville. Southern Valley could easily be around 92 as well. But I have us at 86 for Oneida, Scott County, and 88 for our friends in Campbell County there in La Follette, Jacksboro. So here's your Captain Accurate seven-day forecast. Captain Accurate Weather Authority forecast. Very bold when you talk about cool weather. What on earth are you talking about? Let's reveal What's going to be coming down the road? More opportunities for rain. Let's fill this back in. 85 on Sunday. It does turn cooler by Monday. 
Monday will be lucky to get out of the low 80s and Tuesday too. But I have a 30% chance of rain Monday, back to work, back to school. Tuesday, 82, but the real payoff could be Tuesday night. Because if you wake up early Wednesday morning, you go, man, is it autumn? Man, it's like, I'm ready for football. I'm ready to play. I'm ready to watch some football because it's cool. It's crisp. It's a good word. Crisp. Of crisp 56 degrees. And if it's 56 in Knoxville, it's probably in the low 50s for Crossville and for the Smokies. So low to mid 50s Wednesday morning. Something to look forward to if you're a fan of cooler weather because it will come. It comes with a price on the front end because we have storms tomorrow and Saturday. But I still think Friday, low 90s, and we'll be close to 90 on Saturday. Again, it's all about the timing of the rain. We'll revisit that again come tomorrow. By the way, you can keep track of it all using the Captain Accurate Weather app with Pete Michaels Traffic. Was If there's any, deba uh, any debate, any question whatsoever, who is the best traffic reporter in East Tennessee? Hands down, it's Pete Michaels. That's why I love having him on the app. Weather and traffic, perfect together. The Captain Accurate Weather app with Pete Michaels Traffic. Just search the two words, Captain Accurate, at the App Store and Google Play. Well, my name is David Aldridge. Some people call me Captain Accurate. It's not easy being accurate, so weather doesn't surprise you. We'll see you here next time. Take care.